And joining us today, Brian Weimer. He is an LG Seeds agronomist in South Central Illinois. And Brian, great to have you on with us today. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, I appreciate the time, Brian. And uh, we got to talk about black cutworms. A lot of uh, late planted corn here this year. Uh, no surprise. We, we heard about it all spring, just how a lot of folks had trouble, had issues. But now that we're getting into the growing season, we got to start thinking about various pests and issues out there with our crop. And I know black cutworms is, is a pretty big one that a lot of growers need to keep an eye out for, don't they? Yeah. Um, you know, kind of around that Memorial Day weekend, you know, the, the calls and the texts and the pictures started coming my way from some of our dealers and, and customers. And uh, it, it was a pest that, you know, we, we, we told guys to kind of keep an eye on this year uh, just because the way things were going. You know, we had a delayed planting uh, across uh, South Central Illinois, you know, a lot of wet weather, cool weather. Um, and as we all know, when you start delaying planting, you delay other activities too. You know, tillage practices get delayed, herbicide applications, and um, you know, a lot of fields. The, the big thing that everybody noticed was, as you drive around, even the non-farmers, was how green a lot of these fields were. Um, it was almost like some of the fields were a lawn. You know, by the time we got out there to get going, and uh, a lot of that really triggered, you know, some some flags as to, you know, hey, we need to keep an eye out on this black cutworm. And we, we obviously never thought it would be to the extent that we saw it in parts of, you know, Southern Illinois, I got reports in Southern Indiana, Ohio, um, even Southern Iowa. Um, but but definitely it was something to, to keep an eye on and growers were, were very glad when they went out and checked their fields and, and caught it in good time. Well, Brian, talk about some of the things we need to look for with black cutworms as we're out scouting in our fields, you know, because I know that some of the the damage, it's not very obvious if you're just looking at it from the road. You got to really get out there and, and get a good eye on our fields to see it. So talk about some of the things we need to look for. Great question. Um, you know, because right after planting, we're all guilty of it, myself included. You know, we, we get done planting, we're tired, we're exhausted. We like doing the, the windshield crop tour. You know, we like driving by. Maybe we slow down 20, 30 mile an hour. We glance out. And most of us, shortly after planting, as long as we can row the crop and it's green, you know, hey, I'm good. I don't need to replant. That's the only thing we look for. Um, but like you said, it's not as obvious with black cutworm. You know, you actually got to get out of the field and you got to walk, walk the fields to really observe that damage. If you can see it from the road, black cutworm damage, a lot of times it's too late. You know, we're going to be in the threshold to where we're warranting a replant situation. And, uh, you know, black cutworm, when we walk the fields, it looks you know, just like the name of the pest. You know, it looks like you literally took a pair of scissors and you just snipped the plant off right at the base. Um, and so so we, we watch that. And, and with growers, when I'm walking fields, you know, I usually like taking random areas throughout the field. Maybe it's five to seven areas. And I just count 100 plants. And we look at how much damage those cutworms caused in that field. And cutworm damage, the other challenging thing, too, is the thresholds are actually very, very small. You know, if you look at a lot of the research publications from universities, they'll tell you about three to five percent damage warrants uh, an application of an insecticide to control that pest. Um, in today's environment with high commodity prices and we've got a high value crop, those thresholds are actually a lot lower. You know, we're looking at about a, maybe a two to three percent threshold to to warrant a, a rescue treatment. So, uh, you know, those are the things that we look for. The other thing we look for is, you know, the the size of the the black cutworms themselves. You know, those can range anywhere from about an eighth of an inch up to about two inches, and that could sometimes be difficult as well because those worms in the field can can vary in size. You might find one in one area that's a half inch, another area it's two inches. And so really the big thing we look for is just the amount of plant damage uh, to warrant those those rescue treatments. Yeah, and it's kind of you were mentioned there with those rescue treatments, it's really all about catching it as early as possible because after a certain point it's just too late and there's really nothing we can do once you get past some of those you know some of those certain stages uh you know you get you know those v3s v4s i'm sure you start getting to that point and you get that damage i mean it's it's pretty much over at that point 
Yes. Yeah. It's just getting too late. And like I said, it's a high valued crop and, and there's a lot of pressure riding on this year. You know, we want to do a good job. We want to maximize returns. And, um, you know, this was just another curve in the road yeah, that we had to, we had to, we had to figure out. So. Well, Brian, and I'm sure if, if a grower's out in his field and he finds those cut worms and you mentioned some of those, uh, those rescue plans, if he's looking at his field, thinks he's seeing black cut worm, uh, obviously I'm sure he could reach out to an agronomist like yourself, uh, to try and get a little advice if he doesn't necessarily know all of the options that he has in his toolbox. Correct. Um, you know, the biggest thing I always like to, to, to mention to growers in those situations is, you know, reach out to the different people that you're working with, whether it's a seed provider, whether it's your chemical provider, um, whoever, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are, that are willing to help you on your operation. Um, and, and to give advice and sound advice uh, to make the right decisions. You know, when it comes to these sort of situations, you know, uh, to put my farmer hat on for a second, you know, I don't want to spend any more money than I have to, right? So, I mean, we want to make sure that, you know, if we need to be doing this rescue treatment, that it, it is something that is that is warranted. You know, we don't want to be blindly out there spraying if we don't have to. Um, and just making sure we're making the right decisions. Um, in some cases, there were some cutworm damage in parts of my area that did warrant replant applications. And some guys were asking, you know, okay, if I have to replant this field, do I really need to spray for cutworm? And uh, the, the answer to that was you actually need to, because if you don't spray for the cutworm and control it and replant, you could be back in the same situation, you know, a week from now. Well, Brian, great advice. Any other thoughts on black cutworms that uh, we need to think about here as we move forward? So one of the biggest questions that growers are asking is, you know, we're seeing black cutworm today. What can I do about it to prepare for next year? And a lot of the things that we were seeing with black cutworm this year were weather related. You know, we had a cool wet spring. We had delayed plantings. Um, we had a lot of weed vegetation in our fields. So some of those things are a little bit out of our control. But the one thing that is in our control is weed control in our fields. And so I think that's something that growers need to think about, not only with black cutworm, but controlling those winter annuals and those early season weeds uh, can give us other benefits as well, you know, such as earlier planting windows. You know, when you have a lot of vegetation, it does keep the field from drying out. A lot of times we have to increase our herbicide burn down rates when we go out there planting. So fall burn down applications can help with that. Um, but then the other piece of advice I would give growers is just make sure we're out in our fields and scouting and keeping an eye on things. Um, even shortly after the planter uh, leaves the field. Well, I know a lot of great information can be found online as well, lgseeds.com, and you could find a link to contact your local agronomist or retailer there. With that, Brian Weimer with LG Seeds. Appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.